<laughs> this is so awesome. <gasps> What's up, little cute boy? Where are your friends? Hmm? Hmm? It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. No, 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 no! In the last episode of me trying to make a tower defense, we ended up creating a pretty good foundation for our future game. We made three towers to defend our base, then added a couple of enemies to the game, and finally we made the first level with 15 waves of enemies, so that you can also suffer by playing this terrible game. Today we have even more coming, cause in this devlog we're gonna add... Unique upgrade models for each tower, make special upgrades with unique skills, new enemies, new map, range indicators, new armor system, tower damage multipliers, new visual effects... <sighs> You're gonna love this one! Now in the last devlog we added 10 upgrade levels for each tower, but the problem is they visually don't change with each upgrade, and you can't really tell the difference between a low and a high level tower. Also, the change of tower models in tower defense games somehow affects endorphins in player's brain, and you become a little happier after each upgrade. So I decided to make different models for each of our 3 towers and for each level of upgrade. That's like 30 models. Now if I was any other game dev, you would hear an old ass joke like This will not take too long, right? Right. And then... Ah, this took me whole week. There was no way I could see that coming. But who the f*** you think I am? If it takes a week for others to do the job, I surely know that the same job will take me two weeks. Yeah, simple as that. So after around two weeks of torturing myself and writing some random letters, we have a new upgrade system with these sick looking towers. Every time I upgrade, it's a pure pleasure to see a new model. Like right now we have one line on the roof and boom, now we have two. Anyways, instead of 30 models as I initially planned, I actually made 18, because I thought it would be cool if each tower could have two possible upgrade branches after level 6. Like for example the arrow tower could be upgraded into a lightning tower to deal mass damage, or into a poison tower to be good against enemies with lots of health. Basically what this means is that you can take the release date of the game and add one more year to it. And what this also means is that you can subscribe to this channel right now not to miss any future devlogs. Let's just watch two possible possible scenarios, okay? This is you sitting there not subscribe, and my new video just passes by unseen and you remain as sad as you were. On the other hand, this is you sitting subscribed, and YouTube gently recommends you my new video. Now tell me, who would not want to be in this place? Exactly. Anyways, it is late already and I need a little break before moving on to making new mechanics. The next day I started with making the second level for the game. Since my first level had a very simple path, I decided to make the second one more complicated with more options for tower layout. I came up with a new path design which I totally didn't make combining old Warcraft 3 maps and after a couple of simple game dev moves the new level is ready. Are you still making your levels with these old school methods? Painting the textures with a brush? Come on, it's 2023, just try this and your level is ready in a moment. I also wanted to spice up the game and added different armor types to each enemy and different damage multipliers for each tower. So now each enemy will have a light, standard or a heavy armor type and each tower would have its according multipliers. Like for example the arrow tower would be effective against enemies with heavy armor but quite ineffective against light armor. This means that now you can't just spam one tower type and you have to combine different types of towers to clean up all the enemies. This also means that all the balancing that I've done previously for my first level is now gone. Now since the balancing mistake with my first game that made it almost impossible for mortals to finish it, I'm pretty serious when it comes to the balance in my new game. And I intentionally made the first level a little easier so that the players would gradually learn the game mechanics in the first levels and use their skills further in the game. Gradually introducing the game to the player is a key to making a good game. Finally, I made a window with all the information about the enemy armor, which you can see by clicking on them in the map, and the tower multipliers that you can see by holding the alt button. Speaking of the enemies, I have a little lore aka a conspiracy theory that this world is somewhere between heaven and hell and these enemies are actually already dead. As some of you might know, these enemy models are from my previous VR game. So after dying there, they appear in this new game where they either go to heaven or hell throughout this portal. But we don't let that happen by killing them one more time. Pretty inconvenient, right? Put yourself in their shoes. First you get KO'd with an axe, then you are forced to run to a portal and on the way you are taken down by the towers shooting arrows at you.
What's up, little cute boy? Where are your friends? Hmm? Hmm? No, 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 no! Have I ever lied to you? It's not gonna shoot, just go. <laughs> Stupid. No! No! <coughs> Leave me, Bob. It's over for me. You no. have to enter the forest. I can't. We're going together. We have no, no time. Towers are getting more and more. You have to go. No! Steve, wake up! Get up! Steve? Steve? No! Anyways, before getting to the special upgrades for each tower, I added a couple of new enemies, which are simply the same models with different colors. And I just realized what a terrible game I've made for someone who is colorblind. I'm sorry, okay? I can't just print lots of 3D models. So the first one is green, emphasizing its connection with nature and with the passive ability to regen its health. And the second enemy is... His name is Jimmy, okay? Jimmy is fat, slow and dumb. Can a character be more relatable? I don't think so. So after adding the new enemies, it was time to make special upgrades for the towers. Initially I planned to make two upgrades for each of our three towers. But by the time I would finish that, you would have already forgotten about this channel. So in this devlog, we will make upgrades for the arrow tower only and add the rest in the next devlog. As I said earlier, the arrow tower would upgrade into a lightning or a poisoning tower, each of them with one special ability. The lightning tower will have a chance to shoot arrows that generate the lightning chain and damage nearby enemies, while the poisoning tower will still shoot single targets but deal additional damage over time. I've spent a couple of sleepless days but ended up with these electric chains, which is probably the coolest thing I've made in my games. <coughs> The poisoning tower was much easier to make, but still took some time to add the debuff system in the game. Now, whenever the enemy gets hit by the poisoning or freezing tower, according debuffs can be seen on the enemy. Also, whenever the green enemy is taking damage from the poisoning tower, the region will stop for the duration of the debuff. It's just like rock, paper, scissors. Poison beats regeneration. What? At this stage the shooting part is ready, but the towers look the same as the arrow towers but only with different colors. So once again I opened Blender and started working on the new tower design. These rooms look really cool. If this goes with the same speed, I actually might finish both models today. What's that noise? Huh. Wake up. Wake up. Oh. I also made a new UI design for the special upgrades in Photoshop and now on level 6 we can choose the tower to upgrade. In the next devlog I will add upgrades for the cannon and freezing tower and if you have any suggestions let me know in the comments below. Anyways the new upgrades are ready but having infinite arrows that strike with lightning or poison is kinda overpowered. To fix that I added an energy bar on the top and now every single shot from a special tower requires a certain amount of energy. The energy burns out really fast and does not recover itself, so we need a way to make it recover over time. I modeled energy mining towers that will store limited energy amounts like 300 and will add to your base energy over time until it's finished. This way players will always have to monitor their energy level and manage placing new mining towers. By the way, if you remember my last devlog, I said That's a joke of course, I don't have any friends cause I believe the minimum number of subscribers for sending a friend request now is something around 1000, so yeah, you can help me with that. And guess what, we passed 1000 subscribers, for which I am very grateful to each of you. And believe me or not, my life changed completely. This is me before reaching 1000 subscribers. And this is me now. And if you wonder how my life would change if I reach 5000 subscribers, well, there is only one way to find it out. Anyways, level 2 is ready, you can experience everything yourself playing the game by the link in the description and I would really love to hear a feedback from you in our Discord server. I also post lots of content about the game before the video releases, so consider joining our Discord to get that juicy stuff. That's all for this video, thanks for watching it till the end, also check out my other devlogs and see you in the next one.